Welcome to a new episode of Two Whatever's Way Up. I am joined by my fearless compatriots. We have Michael Spielman, the gaming master from Optimal Debauchery here. Uh, I hate that. I hate that title so much. <laughs> I just made it up just now. You've never heard it before. What? You instantly <laughs> exactly. hate it? What the yep. fuck? I, He's I, Mike. I, of course he's going to say that. <laughs> how, can that. how can that title be given to me if I was a god of Egypt? Uh, that's what I mean. <laughs> What's a king to a god, you know? <laughs> Had to slip Ooh, that in there somehow. You know saying? Uh, and we also have our professional cynic, Jesse Fresco, is here with us as well. Yes, hello. We're here to talk about uh, the good games that will be coming up pretty soon. It's going to be a good year for games next year, folks. Yeah. Uh, yes. And then 20, 25 also sounds lit as fuck as well. All we care about is GTA, goddammit! <laughs> It's been over 10 years, you assholes! You guys know that they're making a new Monster Hunter game that comes Who out? Who cares? Shut the fuck up, you fucking bitch! <laughs> and you punch him in the face, fucking nerd! Shut Dude, the fuck up! Those Monster on. Hunter games are so cool, but like, I don't know if that's like but the big leading you, news. But, but GTA, is that that's what Ooh. everyone gives a shit about. Let's be honest. I mean, yeah, I'm here for GTA and GTA alone, baby. Yeah. Let's uh let should let's we lead with that or should we start with everything else and get that? I, I out think of everything's the way. gonna relate back around to it. I, I I have I get the feeling everything's gonna relate back around to it somehow. So let let's uh let's get out it uh, out of the gate. What thoughts on this trailer, the events that led to us getting the trailer a day early? Oh um, yeah content within what how have you guys been faring in the world of the Grand Theft Auto watershed? <laughs> It uh, leaked online. Sure, it leaked. It leaked. I mean, they've they've had some leak problems recently. Oh yeah, with know. the source code getting out and pre alpha were... footage going out yeah. and shit. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm not shocked that there was a leak. I'm not shocked in today's society that people think that getting in a day early means that they're. But I, I, I'm not shocked by any of it. I don't yeah. think it was any type of. I think they turned it into a way for them to look good, which is not shocked coming from a company who's very good at making themselves look good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I, I think they just, they, they took a cool approach to that shit on the people who decided to leak it early, uh, took care of whoever did it on the back end. Oh, yeah. quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and the people then, that when people that leaked uh, half life two, when that got out, that, Guy went to jail. <laughs> Straight yeah, up went to jail, man. I, I'm definitely with the developers who got online that night and were really angry because you know that meant that somebody had to work late to get that shit out early. Yeah. And so it's just it's just a slap in the face. And, and but Rockstar being Rockstar, unlike the Call of Duty devs who decided to be little whiny bitches over Christopher Judge, um, <laughs> they took it. They mm -hmm. took it a different way. They made people understand why their frustration was there because they had a plan. They were going to watch it. Everyone was going to watch it together. And so you realize that I think it's shitty. Like I, I the, the thing that got me excited was that pre alpha footage when that leaked mm, was that yeah. last year, man, that looks so good. I could see where they were going. I could see where the concepts were going. There were some things in red dead redemption too. I really loved, and I could see some of that screaming and some of their design choices with interactions. And so what I feel like we're going to get is, is, is probably one of the best GTA set in the best city vice city. So, I'm super mm -hmm. excited for more Vice City. You know, I, I snapped at Jesse after he watched the trailer and he's like, I want to go to a new city. And I was like, shut the fuck up. Let me get my Vice City remake and then I, we can go where the fuck we want. I I actually, there's a retrospective that's on YouTube right now. It's a nine hour retrospective. I've been watching it in chunks. And it turns out in the entire universe of GTA, since the first game up to now, there's only ever been three cities, San Andreas, three Liberty City, and Vice City. Like, yep. I would like somewhere new. It's not too much to ask. I'm like, hey, try to they, uh, build somewhere new. I've been to Miami already. They went to know? London in one of those. Uh, in one of those spinoffs. Yeah. 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 But that's it. You know, and that's the only one that's like a real city. Everything else is like it. Liberty City is New York in big air quotes. You yeah. know, San Andreas is L.A. in big air quotes. Vice City is Miami in big air quotes. Well, now it's Leonida. Which is uh, if if it's the basically the lower that, half of Florida. Yeah, if yeah. that map that got leaked is true, then it's it's the lower half of Florida, which is insane. That's yeah. a wild map. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If and that I, map I, is real, good God, I will yeah, see it's you huge. guys in four fucking years when I yeah. come out of that k hole. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I, I think that's the reason why the release date is 2025 and not 2024, because not not to say the. That's because the game is big. I mean, they've been working on it for what over a decade now. Yeah. Like right when they finished four, they went they went right into five, and right when they finished five, they went right into six. 
I mean, you yeah. always start concept. You always start your concept after your last game releases, right? So yeah, so you have cool. to. So so what you do is is you're like, all right, what do we like from five? What don't we like from five? What we'd like to improve from five? Um, and for the studio like Rockstar, they don't give a shit about what critics say. They're not listening to the community yet because it's too new. Oh, but yeah. first, you're, you're building your base concept. All right, what do we want to do? Where do we want to go? How do we want to do it? You know, and then and then you build from there. And you know, they might have started developing like actually coding this game maybe you know five years ago. And yeah. the reason why I say five years ago is because I do see there's a lot of RDR two in that game oh yeah 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 yeah. i think it's the same engine but they've refined it yeah and there's just no way that you don't see the way the concepts the role-playing interactions that were in rdr2 in your pre-alpha build of gta 6 unless that development started more so nearing the end of rdr2's development which would be 2016 17 and so I, i i do think that um gta 6 is going to be their biggest game ever i think they know that i think they're confident in that i think that budget leak of two billion is real uh would not shock me because if if gta 6 is gta 6 it's probably going to make two billion in its first weekend but i mean you spread that two billion out across over a decade it's pretty yeah. reasonable and plus that, you have gta online awesome. which is still going that's their big money maker and while i have serious ethical issues with how much you have to keep dumping into that to keep it going. That's how you're, they you're funded financing, the pro- You're financing the next game, like 100%. You're financing the next game, yep. yeah. 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 If you wanted to jump into GTA Online now, you have to pay, like, what is it, like 500 bucks just to get in, <laughs> to get to a decent place? It's, like, ridiculous. Yeah, I, and, and I think they could be a little more transparent on the RPG aspect of that online play. I, I think yeah. if, if it was understood that you're not expected to grind like you can't you can't do the grind aspect it it might make a little more sense and 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 i'm i'm really curious to see what online looks like in six i think they're going to revamp hard because online gaming has changed a lot in the last three years the other big thing that they did i don't know if you realize this but they hired some of the guys who helped build the gtirp community yeah so yeah there is a chance that there might be some role-playing dedicated role-playing servers yeah i bet six which would just be incredible to not have to deal with modified modified gameplays, which do you, have a lot more problems. Do you guys want to hear my pitch for what the three of us should do in the game uh, online when it comes out? Go what? Ahead. Do you guys want to play Deadliest Catch Florida with me and just <laughs> God damn it, oh. get a tugboat together and go out on the water? <laughs> Come on, it'd be so fun. Just RB. You know that's going to be a mission. There's going to be that. There's going to be shark hunting. You know it's going to be in there. Like no, I'm saying you can think of is in there. We, we commit to the bit. We do an eight hour real time day on a boat. <laughs> All right, I'm in. Yeah, sure, why not? Yes. All right, method acting. Yeah. We got him. I can do that. But yeah, like that the the leak that happened. What was it like a year ago when the pre alpha yeah. footage got out? I'm pretty sure mm-hmm. that's why it's 2025 released and not 2024 because they need to basically rebuild a lot of stuff they need to change things so that you haven't seen all that older stuff from the pre-alpha build that happened to half-life 2 as well there's shit that's in the trailer for half-life 2 that never made it in the game because Mm. that was part of the source code that got leaked so they had to go back in and change stuff no they don't give a fuck about that shit fuck you that's that's that this is rockstar i i think it's just they're they're perfectionist and they want this next game to be great i mean they they have no problem the, you know, GTA Online still brings in money for them every month. They're not hurting for money right now. RDR no, 2 still got an okay community. The trilogy did okay with its resales. I, I think for them, I don't I don't think that leak did anything but let them know that they got to fix some security issues. Mm-hmm. What I think it did was they were like, listen, we I, I don't think they listened to the community until the game releases. I think they tell the community to go fuck themselves. And that's exactly what they kind of give that perception of. And so what I think they actually did was they were like, all right, we need to make sure this is crisp. People need to understand our vision. Obviously, we're in pre-alpha. Let's not panic. This game's this game's about ready for alpha. Let's not let's not go off the rails and try to reinvent the wheels. We don't need to. We know what we're doing is right. These are just small groups of nobodies on the internet. Fuck them. And so what <laughs> I think they did is they said, let's stay to the course. I think 2025 was the intention all the time. And the reason why I say that is just the way that they prep, the way that they are. You know, if you if you take the first GTA 5 trailer and the first GTA 6 trailer, you can match them up almost identically. They are identical trailers that came out two years before their game released. These guys have a set schedule. 
period. They weren't going to rush their next game because they didn't need to because GT Online was making them money. They're taking their time. They didn't let the pre-alpha stop them. I'm not going to let that. I think the early trailer reaction, too. They're, they're just not going to let this shit stop them. They know what they're building. They're building a, a game that could define gaming mm. for the foreseeable future. And I think they understand what they have that they need to work on. And I think that's why I don't think the, I don't think they changed shit. I think we're going to see, like, oh, I see that now. It's there. Oh, wow. Look what they fucking did with it from the pre-alpha. And I think we're going to compare pre-alpha to what they actually have, and we're going to go, fuck, I see the vision now. I think they know that their product will shut people the fuck up, which is what they always do. Did did they have a 2024 release date at any point? No. They no, I, I was just assuming that because, like, you know, 2024 is, like, right around the corner. Yeah, I, I guess I'm looking back at their at their success record, can you guys even remember the last time they put out like a buggy on start game? Uh, I mean, GTA Online was bad at launch. It was pretty uh, bad at launch. Oh, yeah. well, okay, on online being its own beast, like that's a different thing than uh, a scripted yeah, no. I mean, uh, person uh, shooter. Like that, that uh, that's a different because it was. But I, I see that as a lot more server issues. It was like yeah. they weren't ready for that influx more I, than I th- anything. I think Bully had some problems. I think Red Dead Revolver had some problems. But this is you know PS2 stuff. There's always clip up like that. Uh, so state of emergency. That game that everybody yeah. forgot about. That uh, that was Man just Hunt like two. Manhunt two had some problems, but again we're we're way back in there. Yeah, that, yeah, that's back, in, and and none of those being Grand Theft Auto games. No. GTA yeah. Four forward, they have a quality that they pretty much meet. Even though I don't particularly care for Four, uh, that one really probably aged the worst. Personally, I think of all think, of the games. Uh, personally, I think their quality from Three. I think when they made the the, the stand to go third person open world. Yeah, with, with GTA Three, I think that's when they they found their formula and they just yeah. didn't let it go. And then you got three Vice City, San Andreas. Those are all three defining games of the PS2 era. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That's those are PlayStation Two icons. And then we go into GTA Four, which, while yeah, there are some issues I have with the story too, and, and just the gameplay overall, it's still a solidly well built, rounded game with yeah. great acting. And then you know you add in Liberty City stories, which told some prequels to GTA Three. Vice City stories, which told a prequel to to the actual story of Vice City, following Lance Vance's brother. Uh, and then of course you got Chinatown Wars, which originally released on the DS. So I mean, they, they've they have always taken care of Grand Theft Auto, and they know. I think GTA Four gave them the first bit of confidence, but I think just the community reaction to GTA Five and the way that they wrapped themselves into this game, and it 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 just proved, you know, it's a constant top ten game on sales. This game's been out for ten years two generations of consoles almost a third i'm not shocked that it's not three and they make Mm. money 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 and i think when that level of confidence is built in this is where good devs like nintendo go where they go okay we know where the profit is there's a lot of profit here the difference is unlike nintendo the profits on steroids and this fucking thing. <laughs> no. I mean, this thing. I mean, you got to think. GTA Five is probably past fifteen billion dollars in revenue. Oh God, point. yeah, it's huge. I never oh, thought huge. I could say that about a, a confidently about a game. But like, when, when they when they that, announced that two billion dollar price tag on six, I was like, that's it. Genuinely, I was like, off yeah. of everything they made yeah. off of online, that's th- that means that they knew, hey, don't blow this budget out of the water. Two billion yeah. seems like a lot, but it's also small potatoes compared to what it, it it's going to turn around what 20 billion probably in five years easily. oh definitely I mean, that's, easily that's easy uh, easily. sound investment on my part you know yeah. what i mean yeah and again you stretch that out over the course of the development and it's pretty evenly spaced per year you know it's... and you can well, tell that they know how to manage their budget and that's that's key yeah. i mean you look at cyberpunk yeah. it took them a while to understand how to manage right their budget there. yeah right but, like, only I at mean, the final tail end of yeah. phantom liberty did they figure out how the fuck to do it now they're walking yeah. away from that game yeah, but Rockstar, on the other hand, these guys have been doing this. I, I would say we can say that they've understood their dev cycle since three, but yeah. they've really mastered it starting with four. And so yeah. I think they've had games. They understand their management style. They understand how to manage their budget, manage their time, and, and manage their licensing fees. And I think that that's why we get such different quality from the studio. And it's because they do listen to their community but they pick yeah. the right time to start listening. They don't just have it on all the time. They don't turn it off and turn it back on. They wait a certain amount of time. Then they turn the dial on 
They start taking in a little bit. They get a good trend of where they want to go with the data. They turn it back off. They wait to make sure that they're trending right. Then they turn it back on and they make sure that their trends are right. I think they are trend. I think they are trendsetters. I don't think anybody outside of maybe Nintendo is following this quality model, listening at the right times to their community, mm. not letting the trolls get to them. And 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 the quality speaks for itself. Like I, I mean, GTA Six, they have trolling built trailer, in. You know, that yeah, trailer I mean. <laughs> is making Tom Petty more popular. Like <laughs> right, that, that's one thing I I mess I posted when uh, when that happened is that the one thing I will say I love about GTA series is that it gets younger people into older music. Yeah, think, like the think, moment that San Andreas hit the market in two thousand four, yeah. I hadn't heard "Welcome to the Jungle" on the radio in like twenty years. Oh, yeah, and then. Next day, boom, it's on the radio and it wouldn't stop. It's like it was everywhere. <laughs> it's everywhere. Guns N' Roses hit like top in the not in the top ten again. Yeah. No, it's just boom. Yeah. Right it top. got him out of retirement to make Chinese oh. democracy. What a fuck. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. God <laughs> damn it, man. I, I think, Sorry, I, think, I worked at Best Buy during this era. Like GTA five, I was a on the front lines of Best Buy with Michael Spielman here. We 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 were on the front lines of this shit. We saw the cult the culture yeah. shift. It was yeah. wild. <laughs> I mean, I bought I bought that game three times. I bought the PS3 version, the PS4 version, and I've recently got the PS5 version for cheap. Yep. The big thing yeah. I'll tell you is it's not. I don't think they just have a grasp on the old music. I think they have a grasp on the new stuff. There's a lot of GTA Online events that that navigated around popular musicians that weren't like Tyler the Creator, Beyond. They didn't go for the big names, but they went for good popular musicians who were very talented and entertained. You know, they went for a mm. DJ scene. They didn't go for the one, the fluff pieces, like, sorry, Steve Aoki, I know you're doing that cover with Yellow Card, but yeah. sorry. They Steve never Aoki. went for, like, the top 20. They never yeah, went right. for that. You'll never they, hear a Taylor Swift song showing up in a GTA game. They, <laughs> they went for a consistent approach to their music, you know, and, and I think that that's, that shines. And I think that that has shined since 3. We just, I think a lot of people don't appreciate 3 soundtrack for what it's trying to be because i think it's got really good underground rap on it too they have they yeah. have uh nos on there too they're, but they're they're that that first gta3 album is just stupendous and i don't think yeah. you appreciate it but yeah. where they unfortunately really found... the definitive edition is missing some tracks due to licensing yeah. uh lapses so i think uh, san andreas definitely has some missing audio and vice city definitely has some missing songs yeah um, vice city has a few missing yeah, but um, you know, th that's why this is another reason why physical media is a critical thing for every, for right. everybody that had their shit taken away when uh, Warner Brothers said to Sony, "Yeah, you have to take all of our shit off your servers," and you lost all the shit you bought from Disney on your Damn. PS5. This is why physical media is important. I still have the original versions of three Vice City and San Andreas on disc for a PS2. Yeah. I can still go back and play them. The problem is. He doesn't have widescreen support, so it's 16 by 9. Oof. Frame oh. rate <laughs> frame rate is shit. And trying to play it on like a, a large screen TV, it is blurry. It doesn't look good. <laughs> I bet. look good. Like, I, I mean, it's nice to have them as artifacts, but they just don't age well, you know? And yeah. that's that's just part of it, you know? Like, it, there's no reason to go back and play older games if you have a higher quality version of it. Well, let's uh, let's shift gears from looking back to looking forward. Um, Jesse, you bought the game three times. What are you expecting day one? What are you hoping for uh, on box open that they're bringing out of this experience? Kind of looking back on on like four and five and what they brought as upgrades each time. What are you what are you hoping for as an upgrade uh, to your six experience? Uh, I mean, we kind of talked about this a bit off the air is that Mike and I were talking about this. Uh, I think it was early. Was it yesterday? I think how I think the GTA series kind of went off the rails a bit with four when they tried to make it dark and serious. That was a weird time in gaming where like everything had the same muted brown and gray mm. color palette. Every story was dark and grim, like the, the Call of duty uh of the gaming community. And it's like <laughs> everyone got real sick of it real quick. Um, and then you get get into five and it's like, it's bright, it's colorful and it's, you know, there's fun characters. It gets a little silly every now and again. Like, it's almost like a comedy. <laughs> it's, I mean, Trevor is probably one of the greatest characters ever created. You know, it's, um, it's, it, it, it returned to what I really liked about GTA, which is the silliness of it all. 
But I do wish they'd bring back things like the rampage missions. I wish they would bring those back a lot more. I wish they bring back like hidden packages and stuff like that, like little little fun events because that they had those in five, but they weren't as prevalent. Mm. But I wish you could have more stuff to just like discover in the city because if you really break it down, there's not a ton to discover. There's like random characters you can talk to and stuff, but there's no like hidden places to discover. It's like a lot of that stuff was kind of relegated over to GTA online. And I played that for a little while and I was like, all right, I have other shit to do. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. You have to put a lot of time into GTA online. So I just kind of just backed out of it. Um, but with six, I wish they would go back to doing um, the stuff that they did with three in vice city and San Andreas. I, I missed that. Cause I have, I just recently got the definitive edition of three vice city and San Andreas. I miss when those cars could just like turn on a dime. I miss that yeah. so much. <laughs> I, I really don't care for the realistic physics because it's like, I just want to have a good time, guys. I'm really kind of over the realism in games. Realism should be the last thing on your minds. It's yeah. GTA. Like, I'm not playing a real person. I want to, I mean, I'm going out there doing whatever I want to do. I don't want to be bound by the rules of reality. I think that's why the the director mode and things like that that were added into GTA Five later really fleshed out that kind of experience a lot. You, you can kind of set yourself up for more of that improbable kind of uh, play style because, like, you, you go too silly and you get into Saints Row, and like yeah. those games exist, so have fun over there. Um, having a like a, a very reality based sim that is still you know a game i think i think that's what i miss the gamification of it like buying a property and that like giving you a bunch of outside missions isn't as cool as like being able to go into the property and enjoy it um so so i definitely see like what you're what you're aiming for there jesse you're looking for an entertainment experience on top of uh, a reality sim and and they can be at odds with each other Um, yeah and that's the thing is like we know this game is going to be huge yeah like it's going to be a long game it's going to be incredibly diverse in terms of what you can do and you know for somebody like me like it works very long hours and has a very busy work schedule it's hard for me to keep up with that like yeah i I still have Baldur's gate 3 i'm not out of act one yet oh wow i haven't even gotten back to it like i haven't touched it since october i've had no time and it's just that point where i just want a game i can just jump into play for a bit jump back out. Yeah. Yeah. That's why the definitive editions are good because they, they, those were simpler games, you know, yeah, I, I, five. I know that. Yeah. I know that sounds like, Oh, I'm a crotchety old person. It's like, Oh, you just want old simple. Games. But, you know, I kind of do. I kind of just want a game where I can just kind of jump in, enjoy it for a while and jump back out and not feel that. I call them carrot games where you have that mm. carrot dangled out in front of you. Like keep playing, keep okay, going. I, I I can't I can't do it anymore, man. Let's take well, him back to the home now. Mike, how about you? What uh, ant- anticipations on day one? What are you hoping for from like what you've learned from your previous experiences with Rockstar? What are you thinking is going to be uh, the tantalizing aspect for you? I I I think they can't. I I think I think they can't go too real. I think they can't go RDR too real. I think that's that's my biggest concern. I I really could not even get really really into rdr2 because the realness was killing me Mm. it was too real it was too big it was just too much i don't care how impressive the technology is it was too much and it took me out of the experience and when you're dealing with companies like that and honestly the company that killed this this experience is ubisoft ubisoft released so many copy and paste open world third person games and it's just hard thanks assassin's creed (laughs) to um it's God. like just assassin's creed far cry they did it with watchdogs after two which was Fuck, yeah one. you're right because, but and the thing is is because to <clears> me <throat> rdr2 while it was alive it didn't feel real to me and that happens a lot with the ubisoft games the big thing that i, I like about gta is it's not just you that's a character it's not just people you run into that are characters the city itself is meant to be a character and that's the secret sauce that the only other game that had that to me was Watch Dogs 2 the Mm. city felt like it had a personality and they are the only company that's really doing that consistently right now and for me honestly just being back in Vice City which to me GTA Vice City was my favorite GTA game I would just drive around in that car listen to Emotion 98.3 that was my radio station (laughs) Ah, yes, the soft, the, the smooth, uh, smooth, soft rock. Nice. And so, honestly, for me, as long as I'm still getting that feel, that 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 edge that I had the last time I was cloaked in neon in Vice City, 
I'm, mm. I'm going to be happy. I think my standards are very low for this game because we're back in the city that I want to be back in. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, um, something that I'm really aiming and hoping for in this next one. And, and I, I think from what I've seen it, I may be, I'm, there may be a glimmer of hope for me. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of sick of the caricature play. I'm, I, I want characters in grand theft auto that like make it, worth investing in maybe some of the online stuff or some of the DLC that comes out that like, like I don't care about Michael uh, as a character. Like if there was a GTA five sequel and it was all about more of him, I'd be like, Oh, I don't care. Yeah. Well, he's like, supposed to be in sex. He's in sex. Right. Well, but where, not as a where character. Do you get your rumors from <laughs> no, the, the actor mom? literally confirmed he's in the game. The actor is under an NDA and there's no way he said a dang thing about being in that game. <laughs> uh, reg regard not ruin that. Regardless, he's not a main character, right? No, like, he's not. He'll, he's, I think he's supposed to be just another person that gives you missions. That's about it. Yeah. So I, I am hoping for a character set that like isn't worth it investing multiple stories with where like i'm they, they are maybe just a little deeper as people that i'm i'm invested because like i'd see more franklin i'd like to see more franklin he was the most grounded of those three i think he yeah. would make uh yeah. good but like he was also kind of bland as a character too like like yeah. it, trevor definitely stands out but he's a cartoon and like yeah. you're you're running down a bugs bunny hole if you make trevor the like the emotional center of your storytelling. So I'm hoping this like kind of more personal, like Bonnie and Clyde story that we get uh, or, or looking to get here uh, and uh, leaves us in a place where I'm excited to see these characters again. I think there's not a single character across the entire Grand Theft Auto series that I would like want to stake as a main that I want to see often. And I think having these mainstays grow out a little bit could be a good uh, uh... shift for them. I I would love a tribute to Tommy Versetti. Yeah, well, they're gonna have that in there, obviously. Like, There's tons that, of tributes to CJ and um, San Andreas. Tons of tributes to him. The the reason I, I just want to <clears throat> see it because of Ray Liotta. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah now that Ray right, Liotta's yeah, passed. Yeah. So I would just love to see a tribute to to Tommy Versetti. That's that's probably like the only thing I'm like the the only other thing I said was because we're back in Vice City. I think I said I think I said this to one of you. Where I would love for Emotion 98.3 to be there. If you played Vice and you never listened to this channel, you should listen to this channel. Because the the MC on this channel, DJ on this channel, his name was Fernando Martinez. And I've <laughs> I love Fernando voice. Martinez. His I love that voice. guy. <laughs> he would go, I am Fernando Martinez. No, it's, you can't do the voice. I can do the voice. I <laughs> fucking love that dude in every aspect of it. He was just living his best 80s life so hard. I really want him to still be emceeing Emotion 98.3. <laughs> He's still there. Problematic, pervy old guy. At he, he, here's fingers crossed he shows up as a character yeah. in sex. In, that GTA, would be so in great. GTA 3, he's play, he basically is a low grade pimp. <laughs> it's just what, the funniest shit. He was on what the if he's got a podcast now? That'd be great. Yeah, I would, yeah. I would love any of that shit. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the. That's the thing they're going to be doing. Every GTA game is kind of a satire of America when the time it comes out. They're clearly going to be like, they're going to satire MAGA America because it's in Florida, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, podcasting. Uh, fake news. <laughs> You're going to have a uh, weird... Yeah, like all I'm expecting shit. a large social media element in game. Oh, well, I, like the I'm, whole I'm trailer is like cell phone footage. Like It's yeah. all cell phone footage. It's clearly going to be parodying all of that, you know? And, uh, you know, it'd be nice to see Fernando and all those characters. Laszlo, of course, will probably show up because he's part of the writing <laughs> team, so... Hello, I am Fernando Martinez, founder of Fernando's New Beginnings. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, I, I, it, what, what, a, what a fun time to be looking forward to. Um, yeah, I, I, I want to give other games an opportunity here. I don't want to choke everything out with Grand Theft Auto Six. What are we excited for, uh, Mister Spielman? You're playing through Yakuza on Optimal Debauchery lately. What, what's coming out in your world that might be coming up after Yakuza? Oh man! Well, we've actually got probably a big a big list of games coming out because you, the most you, sent, I, you marked a whole bunch of them in our chat. Yeah, he the, he sent me a text that said something like, "I think I have the next three years of content planned out." <laughs> I've got I, I've literally got that many RPGs coming out. Like you know, I've got um, 
in January is when Infinite Wealth comes out, so that's the next Yakuza game. That's a pretty big RPG. It's probably going to be like 60 hours of play. We've got the new Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, which is an action RPG take on that franchise. That seems like it's going to be great. 20 hours to beat, about 100 hours to complete. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth comes out at the end of February. Um, uh, there, there is the spiritual successor to Sweet Coden. Ayudin Chronicles comes out in April. Um, is that how you pronounce got... it? Sweet Coden? I thought it was Suikoden. <laughs> no, Sweet Coden. Sweet Coden, uh, okay. Yeah. I've been and saying so... it wrong all these years. <laughs> and then, at some point, there is a remaster of Sweet Coden 1 and 2 coming out. Probably later next year. Uh, and then also later next year, because the stupid corporate shield had it, Metaphor Refontanzio comes out in September, I believe, is the way that they're 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 um, doing it. And that is the next game from the guys who made Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne, Persona 3, 4, and 5. Wow. And, I mean, the, uh, this, the gameplay that they showed off, the trailer that they showed during the Game Awards was insane. They showed off a weird mix of what is like an action combat system that can turn into and transform into a turn-based combat system. It looks sleek. It looks sexy. There's a lot of Persona showing in that thing. And Ooh. that thing is going to consume me like no other like no other business. Like I, I was looking at all the stuff that came out. And I think outside of like Metaphor Refantanza, which was the thing they showed before the show even started, which is how disconnected this freaking thing was. <laughs> then they showed DLC Final Fantasy 16, which I still haven't played. And one of them, the second one, is about the lost icon Leviathan. That's going to be exciting. That's next year. Um, showing off Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which that's going to consume me. Uh, and then we've got the Persona 3 Reload. I don't even care about. Fuck off. I've already beaten you. I don't need to play you again. Um, but then I mean, we're just in this time where like Visions of Mana, a new fucking full-fledged Mana game is coming out next year. Like, where the fuck are we in the timeline? And then of course... <laughs> And then, of course, in March, the next Team Ninja game, Rise of the Ronin, comes out, which if you haven't played a Team Ninja game, then you probably think that every Souls game that's ever come out is great. You need to play a Team Ninja game, Neo, Neo 2, Wulong. To me, those three, and Lies of P for a lot of people, not for me, stand up there along shoulder to shoulder with yeah. those Souls oh, games. Yeah. And Souls games are, are not anyone. beyond critique. Anyone who's unwilling no. to critique a Souls game is unwilling to show their ass. I've um, played plenty of bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> I played. Pl what was that? Was that game a uh, remnant from the ashes? It's like it's it's very That's a great game. You're just bad at it. Oh oh, <laughs> that one. It's that not... one's not on the list of bad ones. <laughs> See, this is why I can't talk about Souls games. The response to everything is just get good, and it's like God. maybe maybe not all games should punish you. Maybe not all of them should. See, if I can literally take everything out from a distance with a gun, then it, it makes the challenge go. It's almost, it's almost like that's the point of it being a shooter Souls game. It's almost like they advertise telling you that it's a shooter Souls game, Jesse. It defeats the purpose, read? though. <laughs> Jesse, are you excited for Vampire: The Masquerade Bloodlines Two? No, we don't want to I've talk about I've never that. played a Vampire Masquerade game. Uh, I am interested in new Jet Set, uh, Jet Set Radio. I'm interested in that. Uh, new oh. Golden Axe, all that stuff, like the old, older stuff. I never I thought we'd never see another Jet Set Radio game. The yeah. big Sega trailer, which at the end of it, there was no Virtua Fighter, so they were asked about Virtua Fighter, and they yeah. said that they are assessing what Virtua Fighter would look like in a modern setting. And I really like that very yeah. honest, mature answer to that question. Mm -hmm. Because the problem yeah, is, it, like, yeah. Virtua Fighter and Tekken, like, they were kind of, like, competing companies. But it's like, it, they yep. look generally the same now, unfortunately. Yep. I, I think that they have, um, I think Sega's, I think Sega's been on the right path for a bit. They finally yeah. figured out their Sonic problem. Yakuza's been keeping them happy. Total War's been making them money on, money hand over fist. And so now they can kind of reassess their old franchises. So I'm excited to see those five games come back. Can, yeah. I, could, can I drop a, a fighting game hot take? Go for it. I think we need to see our popular fighting game lines come out with brawlers. I would like to see a Street Fighter brawler. I would like to see a Mortal Kombat yeah. brawler. I I just yeah. I don't I don't I don't want to like shift the industry forever, but I think it'd be fun to have more brawl games. I think like like Smash Brothers uh being the only thing I can buy that I can just be good at to start off with. Um, yeah. like brawlers I, I, or beat-em-ups like uh side-scrolling beat-em-ups I, I i i'm 
I'm not a fighting game person. It's not really a genre I gravitate towards. I think it, I'm just it, it bad just, at him. I'll just say it. I'm just bad at him. <laughs> what I'm saying is, you need Capcom to make a new uh, Final Fight game because a lot of Street Fighter yeah. characters. Genuinely, fight. I would give my left nut to get another Mega Man Legends game from Capcom <laughs> if I got anything from Capcom. Happen. I know, yeah. I know, I know, but. It, Everybody just, asks every a, year. It's never gonna happen. If I can't get a new Breath of Fire, you sure shit can't have Mega Man Legends. You fuck. Shut the fuck up, Michael. I'll kill you. God, I, I want them to Mega wrap Man that so bad. I want them to wrap that trilogy so fucking bad, man. Come on. I don't Jesus. want them to wrap anything has to do with Mega Man. Womp womp. Um, how about Stalker Two? Anybody into Stalker? Anybody like? Stalker I remember games? I played the original. Uh, like Shadows, first Shadows of Chernobyl. I remember played the original, and it was incredibly frustrating. <laughs> Interesting. I'm yeah. not. I'm not the biggest. I mean, at the time it came out, I was like, "Wow, this is like revolutionary, open world, you know, post-apocalyptic game." And but now you play it. There's a there's a YouTuber I really like called uh, Civi Eleven. On um, it does like it's he does like red letter media style gameplays. And oh, okay. It's like, yeah, it's um. <clears throat> He'll play like really bad games and critique them. And one of them was the original Stalker. And it's fucking hilarious seeing him find all the bugs, all the issues. The game crashes on him constantly. Um, he That's played bad, through dude. uh he played <laughs> through uh, a game called Blood 2. The original Blood is a really great oh, game. The sequel Blood, Blood 2 is oh. awful. The Ooh, game was uh, game. the game was released unfinished, and so Ooh. he played he played through it and he beat the thing. And his commentary on it is probably the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life. He gets to a point where he's trying to beat these two guys with flamethrowers. And the flamethrower is so weak that he keeps dying over and over again. It just cuts to like footage from Terminator 2 when the nuclear bomb goes off and just vaporizes Los Angeles. He's so angry. Oh my <laughs> God. That guy's YouTube channel, you know? Yeah, that guy's great. Anyway, I love this let's stuff. Let's fucking talk about Light No Fire. What's, uh, what, what's that? Oh, oh, that's the uh, oh god, uh, it's the new No Man's Sky developer game. Yeah. Oh yeah, game. yeah, I'm gonna do Skyrim, but more of it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, you, uh, yeah, I can, you can tell me that No Man's Sky is a good game now, but um, until I see that game on the market and I see the reviews of it, I'm not gonna be interested. I, I know my favorite that part burned that. away all goodwill, bro. He hyped it up again. And everyone, like, dude, Sean, stop. Stop, dude. <laughs> you got, you can't. I like that he's okay with no. Dude, I think he's got a shame problem. kink. I think he's yeah. got a shame kink. I mean, he, he wasn't wrong. It's just, it wasn't great. He wasn't wrong about the amount of worlds he created. It's just that he, uh, everyone expected a certain quality that was not there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, and so I think he was just, you could just tell, oh, he, I kind of like him. He, you, there's a passion to him. That I kind of like, especially today, you know, where uh, this will time us, where the fucking day of developer who, anyone who watched <laughs> any fucking footage of that game was like, this is a fucking scam, right? And then yeah. they kept making it seem like it was a game. Came out four days ago in early access. It's a They've scam. They already stopped the game. They already, they made up excuses why they can't give anybody's money back. Oh and my they, God. They it. It's a scam. That's a scam. This guy did not act like a scam. He took his lumps on the chin like a champ. He fixed the game. It's a great game. And to me, when you take 10 years and you dedicate 10 years to that game, and then you reveal that for five years, you've also been working on the side project, just a small bit of you guys, and this is what you come up with. So you take the evolution that you have found in No Man's Sky, and you start making Light No Fire. He kind of got me a little bit because, to me, he earned back some of his karma points by shutting his mouth. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, he, he didn't turn into an asshole through it and I respect that. Like that that's yeah. it's it's we've watched a lot of people not be able to take that path and so it's good to see a creator go, "You know what? Yeah, I I fucked up, but he came through eventually. Like he yep. made good on the promise eventually." Yeah. That's why but, I can't I can't hate the guy for what he's what he's trying yeah. to do. Honestly, yeah. I think he's doing a good job. But I mean, that's it, the thing is like with No Man's Sky, it's like, you know, you can say Sean Murphy is a really nice guy, but it's like, here's the thing. You can be a really nice person and still kind of suck at your job <laughs> <laughs> or, 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 or suck at expectations anyways. I think, I think yeah, that's the, just, 
That, yeah, don't be like point. Peter Molyneux building up expectations and be like, it's going to be the greatest game ever made. And then it comes out, it's like, oh, you know, it's fine. I, I don't think that's who he is. I just don't think he, you know, he was kind of young. He was kind of new mm-hmm. to this shit. And he I has ambition he and he's got enthusiasm. I'll give him that. I think he right. was just bad. I think he was just bad at pitching it. I think he got himself too excited. He let his passion take over a little too much. Yeah. He didn't set his expectations right. And I, and I think he learned from it. Like he, he still seemed giddy and passionate when he was talking. It was one of the most pleasant sections of this fucking event where he spent 10 minutes jerking off Hideo Kojima for fucking facial animations that look okay at best. Uh, so I, I just, I'm okay with Sean Murray, a guy who started with 12 people at Hello Games and now employs almost 300 people at Hello Games, allowing for his teams to work, to grow, and to provide job security in a way that, let's be honest, needs to be addressed. And you don't hear about any issues with them now. And I think that's great. So yeah. I yeah. can't hate the guy, but we got to talk about blade. Yes. Blade. All right. So we're going to get a, a really good blade oh, game from arcane. Let me tell you the best part about this. You guys have watched that trailer, What you didn't get was it's a Xbox exclusive game. It's well, really? I ain't playing it. I ain't playing it. it <laughs> console exclusive to Xbox and PC, obviously. And so, yeah, uh, did you see any Xbox logos over that trailer at all? What the not. fuck are you morons doing? This is clearly going to be your game. It's made by Bethesda. It's Arcane Leon. I do not understand why you're... That's your companies. You own both of them. Why the fuck is your logo not on this goddamn thing? Yeah. This was their chance to be like... To me, that was the best... Like Maybe I the deals thinking, haven't been totally signed yet. That deal is definitely signed. Especially I mean, since the... Yeah. Um, the guy that was talking afterwards, he even knows what he's doing with it. He's doing a third person action game. And so the fact that he knows that much, I, th- hmm. those deals are signed. Those deals are signed. And so for me, man, uh, but it doesn't even matter. They have every, they have every approval to put their, their logo all over that. Cause that's one of their publishers. So they can absolutely slap an Xbox logo all over that trailer because they own Bethesda and who owns arcane Leon. They had every chance to put their logo over it and they fucking Xboxed all over the goddamn place by failing to fucking just advertise anything correctly. Jeez. God, that mm. game's going to be good. I'm excited for that game. Oh, yeah. I'm excited. Is this what they abandoned Redfall for this? <laughs> I, I would abandon Redfall for that. that yeah, it, I would abandon what? Redfall too. <laughs> why God, the game why sucks. make a shitty wannabe vampire game when I can make a game about the vampire slayer? Fuck right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know what would be funny? If this game actually gets finished and comes out before the fucking movie does. <laughs> God. It probably will. Um, Jeez. At this rate, yeah. Ascendant, so I wanted to talk about the first Ascendant as well. There, There's a little teaser trailer there. It's supposed to be coming out in summer. I actually got the uh, ability to play an alpha version of that recently this year. It was like a weekend uh, of just being able to play it. And that thing felt good. It's a third-person shooter. It's very, very fluid. It, it runs well. It, it was a lot of fun. It was engaging. The story's batshit as, as crazy. And mm-hmm. I think it's going to be kind of a sleeper for those who kind of like those Japanese games. Because it's made by Nexon. So I do think that a lot of people will, uh, will overlook it, but I think I think First Ascendant has a chance to to grab a few people when it comes out in the summer. Mm. That's cool. Yeah. Part of me wants to talk a little bit about Death Stranding too and OD, but there's nothing that really you can grasp from any of that shit. So yeah, I have no idea what any of those games are, and honestly, yeah. I don't know if I care. Death Stranding felt like a complete story to me. It felt like just do a one off and move on. Like I just don't see what the point is of doing a sequel. Like what do you do? Where do you go? Like, I just don't see the point. In OD, it's like, it's just facial animation. There's nothing to it. It's like, you sold the game with just being like, hey, look at all these actors we have in here. It's like, every game has that. It's yeah, not special I, anymore. I just don't care. Like, there, I, I don't. You didn't show me anything. You're an Xbox exclusive. Oh, you're, t- you know, just like, you kept trying to distract me for the fact that you showed me nothing. And it's all just so Jeff Keighley can, can, showcase his friend and i was just i was rolling yeah. my eyes the whole time yeah like, don't know, don't don't mean. show off until there's something to show off you know like yeah. like it's it's not like we like i want to be excited for their projects i'm it's not that i'm not excited but the i think walking in with nothing and saying be excited because I'm, I'm gonna have something eventually it's like come back when you have something then well, i yeah. guess come back when you have your seven minute fucking hideo kojima like trailers and we'll fucking talk right don't come yeah. out here blowing smoke up each other's asses for fucking five minutes 
it was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Uh, and God, I just really adds to my despise of the game awards fucking can't stand you well and like what does that do to skew expectations on stuff too you know what i mean like when you when you force the audience to make up what it's going to be all you can do is fail to live up to their expectations you know like i i yeah Uh, i don't see the point speaking uh, of things that won't live up to my expectations star wars outlaw um (laughs) <laughs> who, 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 rem- who here remembers being a, a guy in their early 20s and late teens going, damn, a Star Wars bounty hunting ha- hunter game would be real great, wouldn't it? And yeah. we've got a promise that this was going to happen. And here we are paying taxes in our 30s, <laughs> finally here's, getting. Here's, um, here's the one thing I'll give that I believe that's the game that's being made by Massive. Which yeah, is the division developer. I, that's like the only Ubisoft owned developer that I think I trust anymore. Yeah. Like, oh, I, it, it, it's going to be great because how could it not be unless it'll you be fuck the, up, you know, like the, the actual gameplay part of it. It'll be the best thing Ubisoft has made in fucking years. Like, Oh, a hundred percent. And that's not a compliment. Fuck you, Ubisoft. Fuck nah. you, Watch Dogs Legion, you fucking pricks. Fuck you. <laughs> Should I play Watch Dogs too, you bitches? Damn, there's Watch some s- great. salt Fuck in this you. episode. Hit me, uh, I spent $60 on Watch Dogs Legion. Anyway, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. <laughs> I'm excited for I that. still haven't played the remake yet. I'm just It's, I it's on my list. That, it's just, wait for that combo, to... baby. It's like, I, think, I think I said it was Yeah, isn't years. it coming out for free? The original's coming out for free or something like that? Yeah, technically all you're paying for is, uh, is Rebirth. So oh. when you buy that tool, you technically are getting the first one for free. Dude, Maybe am I going to be know. 60 when they finally finish this fucking game? <laughs> Why did you keep... How old are, you, are you 55 now? <laughs> is it... <laughs> are, they, are they just doing it as a trilogy? Is that what they're doing? Yeah, is that... They're just paying homage to the okay. three disc. Yeah, it's just a trilogy. So they're... Okay. It just seems like a lot to cram in, dude. There's a lot of shit in the, that fucking well, game. There was a lot well, of game initially, dude. Well, <laughs> if you uh, watch the trailer for Rebirth, you can tell exactly where it ends. It's going to end with Aerith's death. It's oh, end. yeah, of course. Oh, well, of course. Of and course then you can, you can 60 hour the last bit of that. Like, you can definitely hyper extend that. And yeah, yeah, they're already absolutely. Gonna explain, like, it, they're already setting up explaining the weapons. We're going to cover Barrett's story. We're going to cover a lot of a lot of ground. We're clearly going to go to, um, uh, what was it, Cosmo Canyon? Is that where Red's from, the Naki's from? So we're, I, I think we're uh, going to yeah. cover a lot of stuff. We're going to get Vincent, um, but we're not going to. Are they gonna, Are they going to change the ending? Because the original ending was not where it was supposed to end. Uh, well, technically, the ending of Final Fantasy is uh, Sevens is Advent Children. Advent Children is considered. I know. The end of I know. But my point is, are they actually going to do the original ending as it was supposed to be done, or are they going to just stick with the hey the thing didn't work and it just goes to a white screen what what game did you fucking play that that was doesn't it like backfire as far as as i remember like holy doesn't mix with meteor or something oh the life stream protects them the life stream protects the planet that's oh is that what happened yeah dude i haven't played that game in like 10 years this fucking grandpa man he can't fucking (laughs) All he wants is these fucking games, and he doesn't fucking remember the ones. This fucking guy, you know what I'm saying? No, I, I, I'm Christ. gonna I'm gonna make the grandpas older. I, 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 that's enough Final Fantasy, guys. Let's what? shift. We're, oh, we're let's doing. We're doing. No, no, no. Fantasy. We're doing a new game podcast. There's a new yeah, skate yeah. game coming out. It's called Skate Story, and I'm excited for it. Grandpas, <laughs> I want a skateboard. The guy with the skateboard in the background of his room oh, right, right now wants the skate game. That's probably coming out in 2026, Shocker. baby. You ain't going to uh, see that fucking game for years. That game, when they announced really? it, I'm telling you this, this is my fucking claim to you right now. When they fucking announced that new skate game, they that was they literally just got it greenlit. I'm going to tell you, like two weeks before that fucking event, they showed not a goddamn thing. What they used was a really, really awful put together fucking concept trailer to just get you hyped. The oh, fucking no. next skate game is, I'm telling you, 2026 at the earliest. We are not seeing what? that game this year. There is you're no hurting my feelings, game. Michael. I'm telling you're, you. You're hurting my feelings. It's, 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 this is why I say 2026. 2024 is fucking insane. The fucking month of February alone is putting me in bankruptcy. But 
<laughs> it's going to get worse. And then 2025 has got GTA and you're going to try to avoid a certain amount of time before GTA saying, I don't, I don't oh, I'm taking GTA. off like two weeks from work when GTA six drops. I'm oh, not yeah. doing, I'm not doing shit. <laughs> okay. Can you come into work this week? Fuck. No, <laughs> Jesse, we should travel. We could land party together when it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> Just set up two TVs in the same room. <laughs> we go down to Miami and we play it on the beach and we say, Hey, we're going to play GTA six out here on the beach. You guys cool with that? <laughs> we're playing GTA six. at GTA Hell yeah. Six, you know what I'm saying? No, yeah. no, I, I think, I think you need to lower your expectations upon an EA game. Yeah, no, yeah, I, you're correct. You're absolutely. Yeah, it's correct. an EA game. You I just, I can, I can game. always go with a next gen skateboarding game, especially since we keep getting more and more games where you don't have to skateboard the whole, the whole time, and you can, you know, parkour and, and I like the, it. It ignites the teenager in me. You know, I didn't get to do. I mean, I, I'm not gonna argue. I, I think a new skate game would be cool. I think they yeah. should absolutely do one. They just. Um... I, I, that game's not coming out for a bit, I think. Yeah. Well, let's One, mop up the crumbs here. What uh, anything else? Uh, you want to Space little... Marine Two, uh, oh, new boy. Warhammer Forty K game. Uh, I like the first Space Marine, and I really like the Bolt Gun came out earlier this year. I, I'm looking forward to a new Space Marine game. Hell yeah! I bet Ulrich's gonna get into that too. He's a yeah, dude. Like player. the amount of enemies that they put on screen at one time, and you just like to mow them down. It's like, oh fuck yes, dude. Yeah, you want to feel powerful. <laughs> it's like Doom in third person. It's like that's what I want. Hell I'd, yeah. love, I'd love a new Doom game. I don't think we're going to get it anytime soon, but I would a love Doom or Doom. Doom. Do D O O M. There is a there Dune is a Dune game. game. There is that. There is on. There is a couple on the way. Actually, there I a think. couple. Yeah, there's, an RTS yeah, there's a couple on the way. Out. Yeah, there are RTS. I'd love just like a third person open world game. I think they have one in development. Um, I, I don't know if they're doing first person. I can't guarantee. I thought it was a first person survival Dune game. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It is first person. You're Interesting. right. Interesting. Yeah, but um, yeah, that's uh, you know, that's stuff I'm looking forward to. But that's like way off in the distance. That's right. like way off. That's way off. That's not even next year or the year after. Yeah, that's um, shit. But yeah, Space Marine too. Looking forward to it. The first one is kind of like a like an under like a under the radar gem. People yeah, just it just kind of just passed by and everyone forgot about it. Which oh, is a shame. Yeah. It's it's genuinely good. Oh, it's not great, but it's good. We forgot Black Myth Wukong. What is that? Yeah. What is Black that? Black Wukong has a release date of August 20, 2024. It is a, a game made by Game Science. They're making essentially a Journey to the West game, and it looks batshit insane. Oh, put, fuck. That sounds great. And it's about, it's about, it's about that shit. And it looks fucking good. Kind of, I believe it's supposed to be a Souls game. I believe it's supposed to be a Souls like. Uh, don't quote me on that. Uh, but they did show a trailer at the Game Awards, and it looks fucking great. Um, yeah, let's keep going. Uh, yeah. I was hoping for hearing a, that that Bloodborne would get a remaster. Of course, it didn't happen. Gives the shit. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero <laughs> comes out because we're all fucking wanting a new Budokai Tenkaichi game, right, everybody? Boom, that was the bullet going into my I don't know head. what the fuck just shot out of your mouth just now. It, I, it's I, a I, Dragon Ball Z game, and it looks it, meh. Ninja <laughs> Theory, <laughs> Theory showed the 28th trailer for Hellblade Cinema Saga. Uh, can't wait to play that game in 30 fucking years when it finally fucking releases because again it had a generic year fucking thing and we all know that's not fucking coming out this year and also spoiler alert i don't think it's gonna be that good because why the fuck did i get a sequel to a game where at the end of the first one the main character technically isn't alive anymore this is fucking dumb why the fuck are we pandering and making a sequel to something that doesn't deserve a sequel. Anyway, Kimuri's coming out. That looks cool. Uh, the next uh, game from the team who made Ori, uh, No Rest for the Wicked, looks pretty okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, yeah, I did hear about No Rest for the Wicked. They're making a survival Jurassic Park game. Who gives a fuck? Uh, Suicide Squad kills the Justice League. I'm going to get that. I'm a DC guy, so it's going to live for me. I don't care what Grandpa doesn't want. Who cares? Uh, <laughs> I thought playing... it was. Is it, is it supposed to be like the Avengers game was supposed to be? Is that what it was supposed to be? I don't know. I, I I know somebody who got to play the closed alpha that was last weekend, and he's like, it it gives you those vibes, but it feels like it's it's more fun to play this one. Like what what they're giving you is way more engaging yeah. to deal with, and so it's it's like you you can do all that shit, but you don't have to, and you can just kind of. He he was he was kind of impressed with it. He's like he's like, am I still gonna get it? I don't know, but he did mm. like when he got to play. So he said it was a lot of fun to fucking play. 
Right. Um, so, which I'm not shocked. I mean, it's Rockstar. They know the new combat. Um, the Rock game steady. that every no, Rock steady. Give a fuck. the game that everybody <laughs> should be playing, uh, Warframe, has a new update for their 10th anniversary, Whispers in the Walls, which looks like it's going to include some prequel stuff, kind of setting up the origins of that world. That game is fucking huge and has been going on for 10 years, and is the reason why games like Anthem are shit is because if I can pick up a game for sixty dollars and go. Wow, Warframe does this way better. You're not going to spot. So mm. Warframe has been single-handedly killing a lot of games that are trying to be it. Yeah. Speaking of which, coming to Game Rescue at some point, Anthem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah anything like, we should uh, look forward to Game Rescuing out of 2024? Anything that looks like bad out the gate? Oh, man. Uh, shit, there was something. I looked at it and I went, that's going to be I haven't shit. seen the entire list, so you pick out something. <laughs> Um. Oh man, I I don't think Excess is gonna live up to anything. Um, that's the Matthew McConaughey game. Oh <laughs> yeah, that what? dude. When 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 you have to bring in big 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 names to sell your shit, it's that it's flag for me. Yeah, I yeah. think the Prince of Persia game that Ubisoft uh regretted making is coming out on the 18th of January. I think that's gonna be bad. I think if Cinema Saga does see the light of day, I, I just don't see it being good. Uh, mm. it's, it's just been in development too long. Something just doesn't scream that it's okay. Um, the game I think that took me by surprise the most is the um, the guy who played Bayek in Assassin's Creed Origins. He has a new game that is dedicated to his father who passed away, Tales of Kinzara Zhao. Uh, that, it, it doesn't look like it's anything crazy, but I, I think it's sweet what he did. Um, I think Skull and Bones is guaranteed to be a giant pile of boredom. Um, <laughs> oh, isn't that the pirate game? <laughs> yeah. Finally, yeah. after all this time, I, th- I think it's just not going to live up to any. That game has been kicked back down the road. Like how many, like six times at this point, oh. like, dude, fuck off. You, you wasted my eh. time. I, and I also don't, uh, uh, Monster Hunter Wilds. I can't believe you're coming out in 2025. Um, I don't care. Yeah, I don't care. You look cool. But yeah. you're you're not an RPG. You're boring as fuck. I don't understand why these things take so much fucking damage. And I don't have the patience for your bullshit. So fuck you. Yeah, it's a, it's kind of a niche kind of uh gameplay for people. I, I uh the the job I just left, a, a lot of the people there really enjoy them, but they also really enjoy those like really long triage battles. Um Ugh, I just, it's just you not know what I like. You know what kind of triage I like MMORPG battles. Like, I would rather deal with those because there's a constant chess match going on and it actually feels entertaining than to right. fucking be fighting the same dragon who's gone through the same six fucking attacks over and over again in a different order. That's not fucking exciting to me. I just don't get it. And then they have the audacity to call it an RPG. And anytime I hear somebody call the Monster Hunter Games RPGs, I want to scream. There's nothing <laughs> that's RPG about them. They're not you RPGs. Roll. They're they're stat builders. They are not even that. The stats don't fucking matter that much. Fuck Monster Hunter. I fucking can't stand those games. Dumping more salt on that wound. <laughs> we are we we are going to. I I'm excited for the comments on these clips. <laughs> I'm gonna get Yay. shit all over again. This is not gonna be the first time. It won't be the last uh, time. I don't care. Well, I mean, uh, is that? I think that's the whole list at this point. Is I think it? that's most of it. Uh, I think is we're it? landing. Yeah, we. Yeah. Uh, it's well, gonna let, be... let's let's circle back to GTA Six for a second. Sure. Things we want to see in the game. Like missions we'd like to see, events and things we'd like to see. I mean, if they if, don't put Florida Man in there as like the new Bigfoot to hunt down and find and hunt, as that that then you miss an opportunity. <laughs> yeah, you could no. literally hunt Bigfoot in GTA Five. They better put that in GTA Six, and it's just Florida Man. I I hope that the Florida Man stuff is like its own subset of gameplay. Like yeah. like go find the most Florida stuff we've went and searched the internet and recreated it in the game for you to find it that yeah. that could be a lot like the paparazzi missions from with franklin oh. and uh and oh five. yeah and five, you know what yeah. i mean yeah very very similar to that i could see that i'd love um i'd, I'd really love like uh out the gate kind of cinematic um options where you can record your footage you know kind of re- go back in that director mode that they added into five driver that- used to have that the driver games used to have its director's mode where you could make make like 
fun clips and you can yeah. think in yeah in driver three you actually could input your own soundtrack so you could make your own like music video chase sequences that was, was kind of cool driver three is a terrible game because there's there moments it, it's my intention day one to recreate as much of the uh miami chase from bad boys 2 as i can uh, <laughs> <laughs> with the dead bodies falling out through through the back day <laughs> one uh <laughs> God is my witness. I am going to use that game for nothing but evil. Uh, <laughs> I mean, what you else? are in Florida, so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What, what else is going to be in there? Uh, bath salts will definitely be a part of it. Cannibalism for sure. Uh, God, what else? Oh, I mean, man. they're doing the, the Joker, the Florida Joker guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that dude. Yeah. Yeah, I could I could see all did that. You, did you see that he tried, to, he tried to sue them because they, they took his likeness? <laughs> Yeah, I'm not shocked. Get get Bro. your piece of the pie, buddy. Yeah, get it. Yeah, good luck taking on their lawyers. Good luck. Right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is all a work of satire. I'm sure that your uh, our issues with their IP will go well. Just like Lindsay Lohan did. <laughs> mm. Not. Ain't winning shit. Oh God. No, I That's think a, I think we're in for a yeah. good time for the next two years for games. Yeah. I'm also, I have. I, I also appreciate the fact that uh, this is the first GTA that has a woman as uh, our lead character. Um, oh yeah. Uh, there was so, oh my god, the comments that these videos got was like, oh, it's it's woke now. It's like, uh, so you're saying that it sh- you're saying that it should be a uh, middle aged white man as your criminal, I love and not and white not man. a Latino woman. What, dude? They just threw you a softball, you fucking idiots. They're so dumb. They didn't realize that they're dumb. Like, Jesus Christ. I, I think beyond that, it's like half of the people in the world are women, and we want the biggest yeah. game of all time to sell. One plus one equals two. Oh, yeah. There's not 50% women. There's 52% women. You know, oh, so there's more women yeah. than men. You so are skewing can't... it in my favor. Like I, oh, I yeah. just wait. I, I, I think, <laughs> I think, like claims of it being woke are like uh, you're too stupid to understand capitalism, dog. Yeah. Like to understand that GTA has been woking you in the face. Since... Oh my, and, dude, it's been, it's GTA. <laughs> it's Grand Theft Auto. It's <laughs> the it's... crime is on the box, man. <laughs> it's right the crime there. is on the box. <laughs> Yeah, and not only that, I think the reason they also did this, they made uh, the characters one man and one woman, is because they got a lot of backlash for GTA V from I'm critics. Glad, like, baby. that was uh, there was huge, huge claims of misogyny in GTA V, and they're not wrong. Th- that game is horrible to women, horrible to women. Like the one moment that stands out to me the most is uh, when uh, Franklin's mother and her two friends walk out of the house and they're doing their little chant. And then Trevor just goes, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Thank you. And they just walk away. <laughs> like, and then he tries to give her money and she's like, this is $7. And he's like, yeah, I said, buy something nice, not expensive. You want to be a greedy fucking cow? Then get the fuck out of here. <laughs> it's like, it was a horribly misogynistic game, horrible to women. So they said, all right, we'll fix it. And so they said, well, let's get a woman in there. Why not? Do y'all remember Gamergate being around that time, too? Oh, God, I yeah. I remember Gamergate being around that anyway, time, Anyway, let's too. end this episode. I don't want yeah, to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we, I'm just, we're predicting some of the future stuff that, that comes along with this. Because we're only seeing the first rattles of the, of the death throw of people having. Every time a Grand Theft Auto game comes out, the question of violence in video games becomes the hot topic. And it's like, maybe look at fascism and white men and you'll see who are shooting people. But, you know. Yeah, it's not uh, it's not uh, poor people and teachers and immigrants. It's typically uh, middle aged white men that are do- it, the problem. It's not your video games that are telling you to do it either. Let's be and real anyway, fucking clear. Yeah, there well, are mi- millions of people play video games. Thanks yeah. for th- listening to those three middle aged white men talk about <laughs> this stuff. Uh, we'll see you next time on Who Gives a Fuck Radio.